Hello, I'm Dori Nando. You can catch up with all the fun on the Cosmopolitan Mix and on all our shows via podcast. Just go to my Joy Online podcast and search for your favorite show and relive those moments all over again. Only on Joy 99.7 FM, radio for discerning listeners. Super Hits Radio, radio. Joy 99.7. Um, so what's up, Flo, it's your boat this morning. Anyways, um, should we We're getting into the news review yet. Yeah. You're going to start this morning. Okay, even if you do it in the middle of the news review, <laughs> still do 11 minutes as well, so I don't know about. Anyways, I'm starting with the Ghanaian Times this morning. I'm on the front page, Ghana ready to trade on global markets in made in Ghana products, that's according to the precedent. And $5 million bribery allegation. I didn't peddle any falsehood against the, C against the C Chief Justice. That's according to lawyer Ififa. Danger looms at Nabdam, Boku areas as Bagre Dam spillage commences Friday. Farmers and residents warned to move to higher ground. Now this story is like it's deja vu every every yeah, year. Exactly. You know, we have this headline at some points the Bagre Dam spills, you know, people lose their properties and their um stuff. And it's just every year, you know, and I keep on wondering when we're going to to find a way to fix it. Or really, if it's just about the residents just moving away from that area. No, okay, I, I believe what the, one of the plans they, they put in place is a Kualugu Dam. Y yeah, well, that's going to cost a lot of money, and no. they've been talking about it for a long time. Uh, yeah, they believe it, once that happens, it should um, end all these challenges. Yeah, but when? Because it's how many years into the Akufado um, government? Yeah. Five, um, going on six? I'm trying to get an update on that. So, yeah, that would be good. And thank you, Israel, for getting us an update on the Paulu Gudam. A man murders wife reports to police. Oh, so the man went, murdered his wife and then went to report himself. I'll tell you about that story. Okay, it's here. So, 45 year old farmer allegedly shot dead his wife at Lily um, in the Bonne East region and then he handed himself over to the police. Um, Yao told the police that a quarrel ensued between him and his wife, leading to the murder. He said that in the course of the quarrel, he went to his room for his single barrel gun and shot her. After his arrest, he led the police to the crime scene and then he showed them his wife who was lying in a pool of blood and a gun beside her. And um, the body has been dipped at a morgue. It's, you know, it brings into question again the licensing of arms and accessibility. Because sometimes I wonder how people get guns, you know, because people are shooting. This is, I think, like the third story that we've done um, this week about somebody who's murdered their, their spouse. And, uh, but, and with all of the stories that we've done this week, it's always like... See, in most instances, I believe the, these weapons are unlicensed. Exactly. But even accessibility, where are they getting them from? Well, apparently, it's quite uh, available. It's re quite readily available on the, on the market. On the market. The people who want guns know where to get them. Mm. Now, something has to be done about it. Um, well, the Taliban. There's a lot that has to be done in this country. Uh, yeah, every you, so you see that we stopped talking about because every story that you do, you're like Charlie, you know. Anyway, yeah. um, the Taliban are going to stop Afghans from going to Kabul airport, and um, so thousands of people have been scrambling to flee Afghanistan after the Taliban seized back control of the country, almost two decades after they were ousted by a U.S.-led coalition. Um, so the num number of people trying to leave at the moment is 2.2 um, million. And 3.5 million people have been left homeless. And now the Taliban are stopping them from going to the airport. They're like, you need to stay in the country. Um, oh, there's an interesting feature here, the Ishmael Isaac sacrifice, another perspective. So if you're um, interested, that's on page 8 of the Ghanaian Times. Um, NGO donates medical supplies, St. Andrews. Oh, St. Andrews Anglican Primary JHS are crying for help. And there's a picture of a school building, which doesn't really look like a school building that you want your children to be learning in. What's happening is that there's erosion going on around the building. Um, so it's getting dangerous for the oh, kids okay. because the soil is eroding. Um, and it ero it's so affected. It looks like a cocoa. Exactly. It's affected the base of the building, and it may not stand the test of time. And something has to be done immediately. We see that story also almost every day about school buildings that need um, refurb refurbishment? Re I was going to say rehabilitation, but I feel like that's not the right word. Early release of common fund will enhance development, as according to assembly members. Three-day workshop for GIS regional commanders underway in Ibri. The government is urging, well, the government has been urged to promote a local 
automobile se sector. Okay, let's do the center spread. Support media, marketing, communications to propel socioeconomic development of country. Kojo Ponkuma edges the public and private sector. That was yesterday at the graphic um, Stambik business breakfast meeting. Um, Ghana ready to trade on global markets in made in Ghana products. So President Akufado, he says Ghana is determined to participate actively on the global market um, on the basis of export of made in Ghana products. I wonder, what is your favorite made in Ghana product? Um, do you want to tell us? We're live, Facebook, um, Instagram, Twitter, tweet at us, tweet at me. I'd love to know. What's your favorite made in Ghana product? One of them will be a confit. Ah, uh, yes, definitely. Yeah, definitely. That's a good one. Um, the other one will be my mother's granola paste. <laughs> I don't know if that, that qualifies as made It's in made Ghana. in Ghana, of obviously. Of course it's made in Ghana, I mean, but you know what I mean. Like like commercial, you know, stuff. Not, it is not commercial. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. she makes granola paste. We'll send you an invoice for that. Okay. I, haven't mentioned <laughs> the, I haven't mentioned the brand. Oh, you should bring me some. Let me try it and sure, then I can stick it that. in. Yeah, but okay. So Israel's mom's um, granite paste. Um, but what's yours? I'd love to know what your favorite Made in Ghana product is. Group Edge's former president Mohammed to canvas for the approval of the anti-gay bill. And um, will not recognize chief, not formally introduced to us, Central Tongo DCE wants. Um, I think there was a chief sensei issue um, there. Not sure if it was this. There was a place that, you know, they installed a chief and then five there. days later, yeah, they installed another chief. So. Hold government accountable to deepen democracy, NCCE chairperson. Um, Mahama has been speaking about deploying engineers um, from the 48 engineers regiment to repair the damaged roads in the Upper West region. Um, push for reduction in loan default rates. Yeah, we know our interest rates are quite high um, here in Ghana. Are Tata under pressure to live? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sigh. Let me start again. Are Tata under pressure to lead Arsenal out of the wilderness? Look, it took Moses, what, 440 years? Well, it took the Israelites 440 years to get out of the wilderness. I don't know how long it's going to take Arsenal to get out of the wilderness, so don't hold your breath. And no, I'm not shading um, Arsenal fans. Anyway, the Ars Arsenal peoples are facing West Brom today in League Cup City, and, and then they're facing Man City in Premier League on Saturday. So you have today and on Saturday to redeem yourself so that we stop shading. Otherwise, please sit in the wilderness quietly <laughs> and let us think. Liverpool refused to release Salah for Egypt's World Cup qualifiers. Oh, well, Liverpool has refused to allow Mohamed Salah to travel to Africa for World Cup qualifiers with Egypt next month because he'll be forced to quarantine on his return to England, the Egyptian Football Association said on Monday. It opens up the possibility of similar refusals from the European clubs ahead of next month's World Cup qualifiers in Africa, Asia, Europe, and South America and puts them on a potential collision course with FIFA. What do you think about that? Well, yeah, I mean, the, the clubs need to take care of their, their own Fair. and they've, they've paid so much money for some of these players. Mm. Yeah, but I mean, they want to go and play for their countries. Well, yeah, and it's just it's quarantine. It's what two two weeks. Under the circumstances, yeah, if they come back and they have to, they can't be available for that long. It's mm. it's a problem. So oh, you know another made in Ghana product that I love. Tell me. Ghanaian men, absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Argentina. I didn't see that coming. <laughs> of course he didn't. Okay, so I let's talk about Ghanaian. No, let's not. Let's talk about Argentina. Why well, you brought it up? I didn't. I guess. What is it about Ghanaian men that I like? Yeah. They're. They're nice boys for World Cup qualifier. <laughs> <laughs> Corinthians, I'm just kidding. Corinthians, on behalf of the Ghanaian men, <laughs> we say thank you. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. You're a very yeah. good representative. For, for bigging up the for, brand. Yeah, 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 yeah. On the back page, GNPC provides $5 million to construct Institute of Law and Governance at the UCC. Oh, that's very nice. And Tema Region ECG invests 989000 800 to improve electricity supply. Wow, I did eight minutes. Oh, you did? Yes. Okay, all right, good. Let's um, move on. I'm taking this um, as, the, as the brand ambassador for Ghanaian men, <laughs> as you have appointed me. Okay, so we get into the daily graphic on the front page. We're building prosperous dynam dynamic nation. President assures 
in Germany and the president is in Germany. He's been in Germany for a while now and he's been speaking at the, in Düsseldorf, Germany as part of the 75th anniversary celebration of North uh, Rhine-Westphalia, Germany's number one industrial region and most popular state. And the president says, one of the quotes we have here, we do want and we shall work to take Ghana to where she deserves to be, a prosperous and dynamic member of the world community, which is neither a victim nor a pawn of the world order, he stated. I like to go over that, you know, when it comes to the president's quotes. We do want and we shall work to take Ghana to where she deserves to be, a prosperous and dynamic yeah, 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 yeah. member of the world community, yeah, yeah, which is neither yeah. a victim or a pawn of the world order. Is it Nanadie? I mean, he when, says, it comes to, when it comes to uh, quotes, you drop some quotes. I remember that um, we know how to, to save lives. We, don't, we, we, we know how to fix the economy. But we don't know how, how to, to bring back. Uh, yeah, which was, it was such a poignant moment of, of his leadership in you know, but it was it was it was English. As for the quotes. It was good English. As for the quotes. Mm. Oh, he would drop one right. It was good English, Pam. And we are neither yeah. pawns nor like, <laughs> prawns nor shrimps. <laughs> <laughs> we are neither a victim nor a pawn oh, of the right. world order. Of the world order. And yet we're always borrowing money, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the other story we have here. Compliment efforts to revive economy upon Kruma charges media. And uh, that's from the graphic business. And uh, Stanbeck Stan yeah. breakfast meeting. And then deficit in science equipment not supports colleges of education. Right, so the story on the president in Germany is on page three. You can grab a copy and get to that. Then I'll move to page nine. G7 meets on Afghan evacuation and Duterte to run for vice president in 2022. And uh, in, on the gender page on page 13, policy to mainstream women in mining in the offing. That's interesting because we like to see that more women taking up positions. And complement efforts to revive economy upon Krumah charges media. That's the story I brought you earlier on the front page. And that supports colleges of education. President dismisses a CEPES petition. And then we move to page 20 where... Police warn recruitment scammers. So people seeking to be enlisted into the Ghana Police Service have been urged to resort to middle men, who, not to resort to middle men who will end up defrauding them. Indeed, you should just uh, follow the rules and uh, you know, don't fall to any middle man who's going to take your money and you end up not even getting the job. I mean, like you to get the job if you go through a middle man. Mm. Regional couple, two others donate to Ashanti Bruno Health Facilities, and I've got Sime Tomato Farmers introduced to new crop varieties. In the center spread, there's another story from the graphic business Stambik breakfast meeting. Let's build capacity of public service media. That's Professor Kakari. And job creation, revenue generation in fishery sector significant. In, on page 26, recover 1.7 million cities locked up funds. Two fake workers of ECG arrested for extortion. They keep getting arrested, and yet they, they don't stop. TVET, not for dull students. That's the Deputy Education Minister. And um, so moving on to the other stories in the... Daily Graph, new towing service for breakdown vehicles. Nash, National Road Safety Authority Director General. Okay, that's, that's quite interesting. So the National Road Safety Authority has entered of a partnership with the National Insurance Commission and the Ghana Insurance Association for the rollout of a national vehicle towing service. And that's just perfect. I mean, some people have been talking, this has come up before, that instead of uh, billing everybody, um, every vehicle uh, owner, they're devaluing everybody to pay for an amount so that when the vehicle breaks down, they tow. The National Insurance Commission should can work that into the, okay. the arrangements, and so yes, it looks like that's going to happen. Maintain benchmark value reduction on goods. That's Guta. Fix our roads. I wish residents demand. A nuclear regulator warns against substandard services. That story is on page 36. 
And I hear a hopeful of positive results of trade negotiations. Then we come to page 38. Intervene to bring justice. Kaka's family appeals to Chief Imam. That happened yesterday. Media's role, crucial in economic recovery. That's uh, Kwame Nassumini. That's also from the uh, graphic business and Stambic breakfast meeting. I'm almost ending. Find ways to revive operations of Ghana uh, bauxite mine or Mahini of Sefi. And we also urges government. Nursing mother killed in another accident in, on Cape Coast Accra Highway. And the NDC says reform proposals meant to trigger national discourse. So they've, been, uh, they've proposed a number of reforms, electoral reforms. And yesterday they held, a, they held a news conference to elaborate on that. And they're hoping that everybody else will join in the conversation so that eventually the reforms would benefit all of us. AMA seeks insurance package for disaster victims in sports. Gruza names Kufour as shining star of Starless 91. That's Samuel Osei Kufour. And police officer wings made in grand photo, grand photo cycling. On the back page, farmers fear poor harvest prospects as Bagri Dam spillage looms, which is a story you brought already. And to my ECG, invest one million cities into supply reliability. How many? Okay, minutes? seven minutes. Whoa! Wow. <laughs> okay. I did it. Yeah, you did. You actually went less, less, less time than me. Well done, Israel. Really proud of you. Thank you very much. On the as, as the ambassador. For Ghana. Yes, 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 yeah. yes, yes. Okay, the Daily Guide this morning. Um, NDC boy leaks $5 million bribe report. Um, Nana is telling the Germans, we protect legitimate investment. Um, Ghana and Germany enhancing their bond. Um, I hope that translates into easier, easier visas um, to go to Germany. That would be nice. Um, okay, there's, there's a thing here. There's a cartoon thing on page three uh, of the Daily Guide about job satisfaction. And um, there's somebody behind a bar, and somebody comes to the bar and says, hey, medical doctor Rexford, why you leave consulting room, take this job? And medical doctor Rexford says, it'd be this job I like from my Peking days when my parents force me to da 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 <laughs> and it's interesting because so many times we have this conversation of the things that you know we want to do but yeah. our parents ask us to do something else what did you want to become i d i never really knew okay yeah i still don't know i wanted to be a pilot oh really yeah. so why didn't you well things stuff happened but yeah Life i've been happened. giving up on it huh. <laughs> i think you just need a certain number of hours right flying, yeah, hours, flying yeah, hours yeah and then but you first need to know, learn how to, how to fly. fly. <laughs> yeah, there's that too. But it's not too late no, no, no. to start again. Not at all. Yeah. Okay, so there's a story on page five, which really makes me sad this morning. Afghanistan, Taliban tell working women to stay at home. Um, so the Taliban have said to women who work or who need to go out that they should just stay at home for now. They're saying it's for now. The problem is that in 2001, they enforced a very strict version of Islamic law when they run Afghanistan, where women were not allowed to do a lot of things. This time, they're saying that it's only temporary and because a lot of their forces have not been trained in how to interact with women and all of that. So women should stay at home for their safety. And then, um, in, I guess in time, you know, they'll be, they can go out and all of that. There's already some credible reports of abuses by the Taliban, um, including executions and restrictions of women on women and the UN Human Rights Commissioner um, Michelle Bachelet has said that women's rights were a fundamental red line when it comes to um, Afghanistan and Taliban and it's always sad to see how much progress we make you know and then something like this happens and then so much of that progress is taken away so we're praying for the women in Afghanistan and hoping that um, gosh hoping that they'll make it through um, other stories in the daily guide Nana takes inflation, fights to Mahama. And of course, loving the middle page as usual, have some great entertainment stories. Elikem Kumaji renders public apology to ex-wife Pakello. Um, so it was Pakello's Pox's birthday. Um, I think it was yesterday. Oh no, Tuesday. Right. And he admitted that he messed up and asked for forgiveness. So this is what he said. I'd like to seize the opportunity to render an apology to you for not consciously holding us down. I slacked a lot and I'm sorry. And then he also says, I know I owe you a few months maintenance money. 
the building is almost done. <laughs> um, so yes, but okay. he's, he's also saying that, you know, I know you've forgiven me, but you know, if there's a little bit of unforgiveness le left, please find a way um, to let it go. And then he posted a music video that he made for her six years ago. That's cool. That's really cool. It is. And then he shared this quote, by all means marry. If you get a good wife, you will be happy. If you get a bad wife, you'll become a philosopher. I've heard that quite a few times. So anyway, I mean, it's... Would you want to make him an ambassador, a Ghanaian uh, brand ambassador for... Um, this is nice. It's this nice. is this is a very nice gesture. Yeah. It's, I mean, um, especially, you know, when it comes to divorce, when one person can, you know, get up and say, hey, I, I did you wrong, yeah. you know, I made mistakes it's and an I'm sorry. Thing, yeah. It really, it really, really is. Because that's, that's, that's such a need to be vindicated when you go through something yeah. like that. And to do this is, you know... Really nice. So yes, I think Ellie Kem would be the second brand ambassador for Ghanaian. Yeah, men. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you have a partner now. Oh, two wonderful looking men. Oh, my life is getting better. Um, other stories, John Mensa blames Captain Smart. Oh, Captain Smart, Captain <laughs> Smart, Captain Smart. All right, okay. I shall say no more on that one. Women's Choice Awards Africa slated for October. And um, that's it for the... Um, the entertainment stories. There was one more um, thingy thingy that I wanted to tell you about. Um, okay, I can't find it. However, um, Asin Wenga went to Liverpool um, to go and say hello to the peeps there. He went to drop off um, their, their trophies <laughs> for, <laughs> I'm, no, I'm not going to do that, for the FIFA Men's Awards from 2020. I'm wondering, though, are those the only trophies that Asin Wenga has ever held? Like FIFA Men's Awards, from has he ever held like, like a cup? Like, yeah. no. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm done with the Daily Guide and I'm done with yeah, shading yeah, Arsenal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the Daily Dispatch. On the front page, Constitution Review, Fix the Country uh, Joins. Now, Abu Sakara's name. So, Abu Sakara in um, uh, Fix the Country. So, Abu Sakara's name is to uh, have since joined Fix the Country to collect signatures to force. Kufado's hand. I'll go to the story on the back page. And the two groups, the Fix the Country Movement and the National Interest Movement, led by a former flag bearer of the Convention People's Party, Dr. Abu Sakara, has, uh, have embarked on an ambitious project to collect signatures to force the hand of President Kufado towards a review of the 1992 Constitution. And it's a conversation we're going to be having. Now, let's have a quote from Dr. Sakara. He says, Dr. Sarkara suggests that the problem of Ghana and its 30 million citizens are faced with a, a result of the current constitution, which was written in 1992 in the late former President Rawlings' era. And he says, he added that for the problems to be eradicated permanently, a new constitution is needed. This, this is a conversation we're going to be having this morning. There are those who believe that, yes, we should have a new constitution, but uh, the president actually has spoken about this. He says thinks that we should hasten slowly. He, f he feels that the constitution as we have is, is, is just fine, and so we should keep it, except uh, the election of MMDCs, which is a proposal that, that came up. We'll be hearing from the president. He said something already. We'll bring back that um, sound bite, and then we'll get into the conversation proper. Now, Council of State uh, found a separate CJ petition frivolous and vexatious, uh, Kufuado. Size and composition of Ghana's population as of 2010, beating the sickle cell crisis. Will Kufado agree to a constitutional review? It's all here on, in the Daily Dispatch, so you can get that. Let me quickly do the Daily Statesman Agenda 111. GMA calls for support from Ghanaians. Uh, we protect legitimate investments. Kufado assures global investors. And government rallies media support for post-COVID recovery. And that's Kujo Ponkuma, Minister of Information. And talking about COVID, you know the numbers have started going up again. Yeah. So we were almost going, we're declining. It got to 6,000, just a little over 6,000. And then now it's jumped. It's now 6,800. Wow. So back up again. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. If we could get the, the dashboard on screen, we can share the latest stats as we have it. But yes, it's quite worrying. People just mask up please okay so that's it for the daily statesman for me okay i'm going to do the front page of the business and financial right. times quickly 
And then, well, it's 6.58, so we have to go to Mind Your Online as well. The news um, okay, so Business and Financial Times, government ponders special power tariffs for some industries, speed up operationalization of AFTA and ECOWAS payment platforms, major boost for domestic cards are 17 banks. Now issue Ghana Link cards. CSIR wants to trigger amendments to its laws to serve the public better. That's the business and financial times. And then the finder, COVID-19, time to rally around the flag for quick economic, quick recovery. That's Information Minister Kujopo Nkrumah. Current management inherited 23.9 million cities expired chemicals and fertilizers. That's Coco Bot saying that. Murders, 306 cases recorded in first half of 2021. Only one case cl closed so far with one person convicted. Ghana protects legitimate investments, President of to German investors, and ADB to finance Anglican Church rubber project. That'd be it for the papers. The finder, okay. Get, um, my Joy Online. My Joy Online. My Joy Online. Can we have my Joy Online, we have. please? <laughs> Okie right. dokie. Um, Joseph Winfall on 2020 Auditor General's report. He says, I, we don't have the right leaders heading institutions. institutions. That's what it is. Okay, can't see the full headline. Okay, um, other stories on the front, to the front interface of my Joy Online. Interface is front, so on the interface, never mind. Alleged five million bribe. I did not peddle falsehood against Chief Justice Gracie Fifa, tells the High Court. Don't let NPP walk away with their stolen money in 2024. That's according to Mahama. And Burkinabe authorities announced Bagwe Dam to be spilled between August 27th to 30th. As forced to thumbprint documents, um, Kaka's brother alleges, COVID-19, Ghana Health Service record um, eight more deaths. And we are not safeguarding the public purse, just a windfall on 2020 Auditor General's report. And Tewu gives the government a two-week ultimatum to address concerns. And that's it for My Joy Online. We're going to take a quick break. Um, I'll be heading into town. So... But um, I'm leaving in the capable hands of Israel and the dashboard. Okay, so that's the dashboard. We have 982 deaths mm -hmm. so far, COVID-19 related deaths, uh, 423 new cases. cases. And the active cases are 6,850. <sighs> wow. That's worrying. Mm. Please, let's mask up. Yeah. Uh, Wash your hands. It's getting terrifying. It is getting terrifying. It is getting terrifying. I was telling you about the I read that if everybody wore a mask for three months, we would eradicate COVID. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. The mask, the mask is that one effective tool when mm -hmm. it comes to, to um, dealing with COVID. Yeah, dealing with COVID. Yeah. Well, guys, you know, mask up, stay safe out there. Anyway, we're taking a quick break. When we come back, I can see another handsome gentleman in the studio, Oreku, and um, he'll be bringing us the sports. We have three ambassadors now, three ambassadors for Ghanaian men, dashing, strong, handsome, and honourable. There's hope yet. Thank you for a better Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. Sure.